Hi everyone, welcome to The Future is Bright, The Future is Remote Right. My name is uh, Tom, I'm uh, one of the Prometheus team um, and actually primarily work on the Remote Right code. Uh, in my day job, I'm the VP product at Grafana Labs. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what that means after three years. Um, I also started the Cortex project alongside Julius and uh, more recently started the Loki project, uh, the kind of Prometheus inspired uh, log aggregation system. Uh, when I'm not when I'm not coding, uh, when I'm not working, I uh, like to make 3D printers and occasionally uh, brew uh, brew my own beer. So, without further ado, um, today I'd like to talk about four things. Right, I'd like to talk about remote write. How did it start? What is it? What is it for? Um, I'd like to talk about standardizing remote write and uh, a lot of the recent efforts efforts over the last two months to um, define what it means and to test that. Uh, I'd like to talk about what's next or what's in the immediate future for, for the remote write protocol. So I'd like to talk about metadata. I'd like to talk about exemplars. And finally, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, further off in the future for remote write, um, some of the ideas we've got. I noticed the slide says exemplars. I'd love to know what they are. So what is remote write? Um, Actually, funnily enough, the story of remote write kind of matches my story with Prometheus. Um, the first PR I did to the project was to to switch the remote write system um, from gRPC over to uh, protobufs and HTTP. Um, this was because it was quite hard at the time. You know, this was almost five years ago. It was quite hard at the time to get H uh, to get gRPC to go through um, an elastic load balancer, uh, and I wanted to use Prometheus remote write to send data to to Cortex. And really, that is what Prometheus Remote Write is for. It's for sending data to other systems. Prometheus sits there, scrapes the samples, scrapes your jobs, scrapes metrics from your instrumented applications and exporters, um, collects them, stores them, but can also forward them on to other systems. So we did this. Um, we did this about uh, five years ago, um, and and over the past five years, we've seen many vendors kind of take notice of Prometheus and and really add support for Prometheus remote write to their to their products. Um, you know, they've they've made it so that you can send data from Prometheus to pretty much any any of the metrics vendors in in the world. In fact, if you look at the Prometheus docs, you'll see there are over 30 different projects um, that accepts Promethe that accept Prometheus remote write or, or send Prometheus remote write. And really kind of it's amazing that, that only over five years has it been so popular. Um, and we're not resting there, you know, we, we really want to kind of push the interoperability story uh, in Prometheus uh, as far as it will go. Uh, and more recently, uh, in the not the most recent, but the one before that release, uh, we added the ability to actually have Prometheus receive remote write uh, requests as well. So you can now configure a Prometheus to send data from one place to another, right? This really solves the kind of global federation problem in a very different way. You know, we noticed with with federation. You know, federation is the way you can send, uh, you can set up a Prometheus to scrape the metrics from other Prometheus servers. So this allows you to have a Prometheus server, let's say, in each region, and then a global one that scrapes all the data from the uh, from the regional ones, and get that kind of central view where you can run your kind of central aggregations. However, the challenge here is that this requires, you know, the, the, the global Prometheus to, to be able to scrape all the edge ones, right? So you have to open up firewall ports and figure out ways of uh, securing, you know, three or more different Prometheus servers. With the, the push-based approach coming from uh, Prometheus Remote Write, you only have to open up that one central location and, and, and kind of lock down and authenticate one central location. And you can have the edge locations push to that central location. Um, this might not sound like a big deal, but imagine if that uh, these edge locations um, were on IP addresses that were changing, or were maybe on flaky networks. You know, the remote write protocol might be a better a better fit for that. So this is in the uh, in the second to latest uh, Prometheus release. It's experimental. We'd love for you to give it a go, see if see what works, see what doesn't work, and and see if it suits this use case. So that's remote write. That's um, how it started. What it's used for. Um, what we have noticed with all this adoption by by many many people is there's been some differences in implementation, and we want to make sure that this ecosystem is interoperable, 
and, uh, and really that all the users of all the different components can have the best possible experience. In particular, one of the things we've noticed is there's a bunch of projects popping up that, that fill this kind of scrape Prometheus metrics and send them else, elsewhere using remote write. You know, obviously Prometheus does that, uh, is the original one. Um, about a year or two, or a year ago, uh, we launched the Grafana agent, which is a kind of stripped down version of Prometheus using all the same code, um, but kind of stripped down, lighter weight version that doesn't have any local storage. You can't do queries, but it will just scrape your jobs and uh, send them uh, using remote write. There's also the Victoria Metrics agent. Uh, Influx's Telegraph will scrape Prometheus, uh, scrape jobs in instrumented with Prometheus metrics and send them elsewhere using remote write. And then more recently, you've got op Open Telemetry, which will also scrape jobs using Prometheus metrics and send them over remote write. So these are the five systems that I'm going to look at. And, you know, there are other systems. I have to kind of slip in at least one meme into each of my talks. So we started this effort to, st to standardize it, right? We, we wanted a document that described what Prometheus Remote Write was, what it meant to say you were compatible with that. We also wanted to explain a lot of the reasoning behind the decisions, why we've done it this way. Um, it wasn't all just arbitrary. And finally, we wanted to give some thought to how would we future-proof this protocol? How would we upgrade this protocol? How would we make it so that when we introduced a V2, we could be kind of backwards compatible. I'm hoping that this will allow us to remove the experimental flag from Prometheus Remote Write. One of the key things here is that we're not changing anything with this standardization. Uh, we're just documenting the current behavior, how it currently works, because there's so many people that use this that I don't think realistically we can change it, uh, at least not in a uh, incompatible way. You know, this will also allow us to offer some kind of compatibility guarantee. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone in the community who's commented on the doc, who's proposed changes. It's really been a big team effort. So now that we have this standard, it's time to test those, those agents that I mentioned against this standard. And to that end, uh, over the last week or two, I've built a test harness that runs an instance of each of the agents, exports some metrics for them to scrape, and then configures them to send that data back to the test harness via remote write. We then, in the test harness, in, you know, export various different metrics and, and you know, test, examine the, the response we get over a remote write and check it matches what we expect. You know, and, and you know, this is relatively straightforward. You know, we export a, a counter, we check we get a counter back. We export a histogram, we check we get a histogram back. But there's a lot of nuance to this protocol. There's a lot of different areas which some people do or don't implement. And so we wanted to kind of figure out what level of coverage we had. These are early results. Um, you know, I'm filming this talk uh, almost a month before you'll be watching it. So hopefully uh, over the course of the next month, some of these vendors uh, and some of these other projects will improve their compatibility with Remote Write, and we're actively working with all of them to do that. So to start with, obviously we have Prometheus, right? Prometheus implements all of Remote Write. The specification is just a document that describes what Prometheus does. So we'd expect it to pass all these tests. The Grafana agent, using all the same code that Prometheus uses, um, just implements the same thing, right? And again, we kind of expect it to pass all the tests. Interestingly, uh, we found a bug in the Grafana agent using this test suite. Uh, it turns out we were um, not removing uh, duplicate labels. Um, so we fixed that in the point one release. It was, it was one line of code. Um, the Victoria Metrics agent does pretty well, actually. Um, it does everything, it, it has some slight inconsistencies around how it does the up metric. It doesn't actually, um, as far as we can tell, send the up metric when there's a failed scrape, uh, which is kind of important for the test harness to, to, to tell the difference between the agent not doing anything and the agent successfully kind of failing. Um, and also the Victoria metrics agent doesn't implement the staleness markers, which are a really important way that we can tell when metrics go away. Uh, telegraph. Not quite as not quite as complete as uh, the Victoria metric agent. In general, it doesn't do up or staleness at all. Uh, but it, you know, and it doesn't quite have the right job labels there. Um, you can program it to add job labels, um, but it's kind of missing some of the features of service discovery that that require that, that would add those job labels. Then finally, the open telemetry collectors, the newest kid on the block. So not 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 as far along in its support. It doesn't propagate histograms correctly. Doesn't do a lot of the job labels correctly. No up metric. Uh, no uh, no staleness markers. 
we're actively working with the uh, open telemetry um, team to try and get better uh, better support and hopefully in a month or so um, we can uh, we'll, we'll see if they've got better support I'll be I'll be hanging around for a kind of live Q&A at the end and I'll make sure I, uh, I bring uh, updated results for that so next uh, metadata and uh, exemplars not exemplars um, so first metadata not a lot of people know actually that that Prometheus exports um, Prometheus uh, client libraries allow you to add kind of help text and, 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 and type metadata uh, to every metric in your application and uh, Prometheus scrapes this and stores this in memory stores the latest values in memory and then has an API so the, the, the client library uh, client applications to Prometheus like Grafana or or the Prometheus UI can can query this and use it to help build these kind of UIs. Um, so Grafana builds this particular UI, just allowing you to see what each each metric is. Um, we want to enable um, systems that implement remote write to have the same information and basically the same experience uh, as Prometheus. And so back in uh, February last year, so over a year ago, uh, Josh added support for um, uh, metadata to the remote write protocol. So it's an extra field and it's kind of a bit best effort, right? We're, we're, we're taking some of the metadata and sending it on a period uh, alongside your samples. Uh, we want to make a series of improvements to this. We want to write the metadata to the write ahead log. We want to send it alongside the same metrics that it's supposed to be sent with instead of just kind of arbitrarily sharding it. Um, and, and Rob from, uh, from Chronosphere actually has a PR that achieves some of this that we want to work with him to get in over the next few months. So the next example um, we want to give is exemplars, right? Spelt correctly this time. In exemplars uh, allow you in Grafana to, to overlay kind of dots on a graph. And then when you click on one of those dots, one of those exemplars, you can jump straight to the trace that that, that dot kind of represents, right? So, so Bjorn added uh, exemplar support to client Golang quite a while ago, and Callum added exemplar support to, um, to Prometheus in the last release. Um, and together you can implement this really cool experience that really speeds up kind of instant response and debugging workflows and, and really kind of makes the whole system feel a lot more integrated. Uh, Prometheus doesn't actually care where these traces are stored. You can store them in Jaeger, you can store them in Zipkin, or you can store them in Grafana Tempo itself. Um, we want to make this available to, uh, to remote write endpoints to, to people who are implementing remote write should also be able to receive exemplars and, and offer the same APIs and the same experience. And to that end, Callum from Grafana Labs, he is adding uh, a remote write uh, for exemplars. So this is going you know, to be writing the exemplars to the write ahead log and then tailing that write ahead log is, is as part of the remote write code and, and, and sending them out in batches. This will also enable kind of long-term storage of exemplars and, and some really cool use cases around that. Callum assures me this is going to be merged by the time you, uh, you're listening to this talk. And, and we really hope that this is going to be in the next major release of, uh, of, of Prometheus. So, finally, what's next? What are the kind of more long-term things we want to do with, uh, with remote writes? First thing I want to talk about is atomicity. So, Prometheus has this really cool guarantee that... Um, sorry, before I go into the guarantee... A lot of you will know that Prometheus uh, metrics are normally, you know, sometimes composite and actually made up of multiple time series. You know, the example here being a histogram, which is made up of a time series per bucket alongside a kind of a count and a sum time series. Um, this is this is kind of how we build up these histograms and how we can tell latencies in your application. And so it's really important that uh, when you run a query, you only see a, a, a complete scrape. You see a consistent snapshot of a scrape. You don't. You don't see kind of partial data or half updates from one scrape and half updates from another scrape. Um, Prometheus offers this, right? It's it's quite a cool feature of TSTB and it's uh, it's it's really uh, really useful. Remote write unfortunately doesn't do this. It actually prevents systems from from offering this guarantee because of the way the remote write uh, serve, uh, the remote write client inside Prometheus um, splits up uh, batches of requests to send them in parallel, right? So this means that you, you know, remote write systems might actually get um, metrics or samples for different series within a histogram in, in a different order, right? And we'll actually see these partial states. This means they don't have the opportunity to implement this, um, which we, we think kind of sucks, right? So we want to fix this. We, we haven't decided yet how we're going to fix this, 
you know, one of the thoughts is that we're going to make sure that this scrape, the entire batch of samples that are gathered in a single scrape uh, are written to the write head log in a single batch, which is kind of already the case. But then the, re the, uh, the remote write system reads that entire batch in a single, um, in a single kind of scrape in a single read of the uh, um, right head log and sends it out to the remote system in a single batch as well. And so kind of aligning this throughout the entire pipeline will, uh, will at least give the kind of uh, the systems at the other end of the remote right will give them the opportunity to, uh, to offer atomicity. Um, another thing we're working on solving is kind of, or improving at least, is the, the handling of 429. So 429 is the is the status code that remote systems will send when Prometheus is sending samples to them too quickly. It's 429 is kind of rate limit, it's a back off, right? So Prometheus is is designed to back off and retry on 500s. Now 500s indicate there was something wrong with the system. You know, it was the server's fault. We couldn't handle the request. You know, please try again. Um, but but Prometheus doesn't retry 400s, right? And it, it, that's on purpose because 400s indicate there's something wrong with the request. Right, and that request will not succeed if you try it again. In particular, like 400 might be an invalid request, like it's just gibberish, like please don't send me gibberish. You know, it might be that the, you know, you've hit some limits on the total number of series. There's no point in trying again because you've hit these limits. And it's weird, I think, that 429 is a is a is a is a rate limit, right? Because you know, actually, if you back off and retry the 429, uh, the request that received a 429 response might actually succeed. Either way, what happens is. You know, we talked about how Prometheus is uh, collecting data from your applications and writing them to a write head log and then reading that write head log and sending it to a remote system. And if that re if that if there's a network outage or, or heaven forbid an outage on the remote system, um, then that will start to buffer up on disk. Right. And these samples will buffer on disk and Prometheus will basically wait, you know, periodically retrying, but wait for um, wait for the system to come back up. And then after that outage, Prometheus will try and replay that right head log to the remote system to fill in any gaps. Um, you know, Prometheus will replay as quickly as it can, and, and it can replay pretty quickly. So it replays many, many, many samples, and that upstream system sends a 429 saying you're replaying too quickly. At that point, Prometheus will basically just uh, drop the data. So after, after doing all this really hard work to to batch up the, you know, to buffer up the data on disk and, and make sure it's there for, you know, during the period of the outage. When the system comes back, we replay 429 and drop the data. And it's a real shame we do this. So we think we can improve this by uh, backing off on 429s and, and knowing when to kind of balance, um, you know, catching up against kind of falling behind because, you know, you never want a system to kind of get behind and stay behind. So finally, an another area we're actively looking in uh, and investigating and, and looking at improvements for the remote write system is its bandwidth usage. You know, I, I perhaps touched on a bit earlier how we designed the system to be pretty, uh, pretty simple, pretty stateless, right? And, and this is a key principle that I think has really made the protocol easy to implement, right? There are no interdependencies between messages in the protocol. Uh, and this simple, just drastically simplifies downstream implementations. It makes things like Cortex easy to write. It makes the um, the adapters between Prometheus and Graphite and Prometheus and Influx, it makes those adapters simple to write. And I think this has been pretty successful. Um, you know, we've seen, as I said, 30 different uh, implementations of remote write. And I think one of those, one of the reasons this has been successful is because it's a relatively simple uh, protocol. However, this comes with downsides, right? It, it's expensive, right? The the fact that the batches are stateless means that they have to repeat labels many, many times. You know, the same label is sent in most batches. And this really eats bandwidth. You know, we use between 10 and 20 bytes per sample uh, to send via remote write. And Prometheus only uses one or two bytes per sample uh, on local disks. So you can see there's a big, big room for, for improvement here. And our internal monitoring at Grafana Labs um, just to propagate samples between our internal Prometheus nodes and, and our internal Cortex cluster, we're doing over, over 90 megabytes a second of, uh, of remote write. So there's there's probably a 10x gain here. And there's various ideas. We think um, a lot of the work we're going to do on atomicity and, and batching and, you know, building these consistent batches will allow us to have a kind of symbol table in the, um, in the remote write um, requests that, that will probably uh, reduce, reduce bandwidth usage quite a lot. 
and that's it really you know we've covered kind of what is remote right what's the history why does it exist how did it start um, we've covered our efforts over the last couple of months to standardize remote right to really document how it works why it works that way and then test implementations to make sure that they work the, the way they should uh, we talked about what's coming kind of you know pretty soon hopefully in the next release or two of Prometheus we should uh, improve the way we send metadata via remote write and, and start sending exemplars via remote write and finally we've talked about some of the ideas we have for the more long-term future how we want to make it uh, remote write atomic how we want to uh, deal with back off and retry on 429s and, and how we want to reduce the uh, bandwidth consumption of remote write so I'm gonna I'm gonna hang around now. Um, take some live questions. Um, if any of this was interesting, please do, please do ask. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.